Each year in the United States, almost 2 million people become infected with bacteria that are resistant to antibiotics. About 23,000 people die because of these infections. News 4's Luke Moretti takes a closer look tonight at this emerging threat. This is an extremely serious problem. Imagine getting an infection that can kill no matter how healthy and wealthy you are. I don't think that at this point we can count on some new panacea antibiotic coming through that can kill every single bacteria. It's a rough and tumble, knockdown fight that's leaving some public health officials and researchers dazed. It is pretty scary. In this case, a nightmare bacteria with a punch so powerful it could mean lights out, as in you're dead. Right now, the bacteria are, are winning the game. They are winning the race, and we are now in catch-up mode. Dr. Thomas Russo heads the Infectious Diseases Division at the Jacobs School of Medicine and Biomedical Sciences at UB. He says the rise of drug-resistant bacterial superbugs is a very real threat. This is going to spread. It's going to get worse. There's going to be many more deaths. And in the worst-case scenario, this could become catastrophic. Consider the case of a Nevada woman in her 70s who died last year from an infection caused by a superbug known as CRE. Dr. Russo says this should serve as a wake-up call in the United States. Is this the first example of someone that acquired uh, an infection due to a bacterium that's resistant to all the antibiotics that are available to physicians in the United States? According to the Centers for Disease Control, CRE are a family of germs that are difficult to treat because they're highly resistant to antibiotics and in the U.S. infect around 9,300 people per year and kill around 600. Someday we may run out of options. There are just a limited number of antibiotics out there. Erie County Health Commissioner Dr. Gail Burstein says antibiotics are difficult to develop and are not a big money maker for the drug industry. It's not like a drug that, say, um, pharmaceuticals can make a lot of money because somebody a medicine people take every day. It's just hopefully for a short course and then it's done. That's why it's more important for government funded research to continue this on. We have to pick up, someone has to pick up the ball. Dr. John Crane, a biomedical researcher and UB professor, says the federal government's approval process for new breakthrough antibiotic drugs needs to be fast tracked. If you ask the drug companies to do a study with a thousand patients, it's going to take them 10 or 15 years to just to find that many people with this particular nasty bug. So we should allow them to approve drugs uh, more quickly with smaller uh, 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 sample sizes in humans. Bacteria become resistant when they're exposed to antibiotics. Essentially, they learn how to outsmart the drugs by mutating and sharing genetic information with other bacteria. When that happens, treatment options become limited and infections start to pose a greater risk. By using antibiotics uh, when not necessary, uh, we encourage mutations or we select out bacteria that are already resistant so that they become one of the dominant bacteria in our intestinal tract, skin, and elsewhere. The search for new and powerful antibiotics is ongoing at the University at Buffalo and other institutions around the nation. Researchers hope to one day discover a knockout punch before superbugs become an overwhelming force in the future. If this trend continues, and there's every reason to believe it will because there's few, if any, antibiotics that are being developed right now that are active against these extremely resistant bacteria. We're at risk for entering uh, the phase in medicine when we had no antibiotics at all. While anyone can become infected with antibiotic-resistant bacteria, most deaths occur from drug-resistant infections picked up in places like hospitals and nursing homes, according to the Centers for Disease Control. For most people, if you st can stay out of the hospital, yes, your chance of coming down with one of these really bad drug-resistant pathogens is relatively low. There are ways to protect against drug-resistant infections. First, don't demand antibiotics from your doctor when you're sick. People in the community shouldn't expect that every time they see a health care provider for an illness that they walk out with a prescription for an antibiotic. Um, because, some, you know, in the bigger picture, that can cause more harm than good.
Also, think about safety and hygiene. Experts recommend getting updated and regular vaccinations. Wash your hands before eating and after using the restroom. Wash your hands after handling uncooked food. Cook meat and poultry thoroughly to kill off bacteria. If these highly drug-resistant organisms continue to spread, just think how it would undermine our entire medical system. Doctors would not want to be able to operate on a person who needed a heart surgery because of a fear they would develop a fatal infection and die before they even got out of the hospital. Now, according to a recently published study in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, CRE is more common than previously believed and may be transmitted from person to person without causing symptoms. A few takeaways here uh, from the CDC. Prevention, tracking, improving antibiotic use, and developing new drugs. So it's an stay ongoing out. process. Having a doctor say stay out of the hospital so you don't get these superbugs, that's yeah. a scary thought. You do hear yeah. that a lot. But you know, Dr. Russo made a really good point. Our whole lives, we've been used to having antibiotics that would fight any that's of right. these infections. But we're coming to a time when we may not. Right. And, and the first thing we want to do when we go to a physician when we're ill, give me an antibiotic. Sure. And that's not always the right thing. Yeah. So. All right. Okay. Thank you, Lou. Yep.